Hello friends, this video on chemical kinetics part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Correct. So let's see a reaction from macroscopic level. I mean I have a reaction, I am concerned only about the rate. Rate is the only thing that is in my mind now, right? So if I am at the macroscopic level, I am not going in the molecular level, at a very bird eye view level you can see it. Bird eye view. Only from a distance I am seeing it. There is a container and something is happening. Like I am just seeing the quantity of uh, reactants, quantity of product. Those things I am seeing, then I call it a macroscopic level. I am not even concerned about which molecules are reacting, why they are reacting. I am concerned only at a macroscopic level, right? I am only interested in the amounts of the reactant reacted and the amount of product form, right? Amount of this, amount of this. That's what I am interested. And that is what you call macroscopic level. But when you talk about the microscopic or molecular level, where you actually want to see the molecules, how it is taking part, how they are reacting, right? So if you see for a given reaction, if you go inside any uh, uh, reactant has will have atoms and molecules, correct? So you want to see what is happening, what is actually happening inside, why A plus B is becoming C and D. So if you see the molecules of A are in blue, B in red, C in green and D in red, you see they are reacting, right? They are, they are uh, bumping each other and they are forming new products. This is something at very, very microscopic level or molecular level we call because here in this level, we are concerned about the reaction mechanism, how it is reacting, right? Their orientation, the energy of these molecules and how they are getting uh, undergoing collisions and what is the effective collision, which is non-effective collision, how the product is getting formed, all those kind of things. Role of catalyst also, how the, how the catalyst is uh, helping to increase the reaction rate. So this is all molecular level. So in, in chemical kinetics, we'll discuss the reactions both at macroscopic level and molecular level. Correct? So in this whole chapter, we'll, we'll first start with macroscopic level. We'll talk about the change in the product or change in the reactant concentration and once we understand the concepts why the products are how the rate of change of product is uh, linked with other parameters then we'll start at molecular level about how the molecules interact and the product is getting formed correct so molecules at the molecular level i will assume the molecules as carb and the bumping of molecules which you see here is similar to bumping of cars correct so if you see these are my cars and if the car bump each other at a very high speed and they almost ramp each other right they break uh, one another then i'll call a reaction happen right for example in this case you see the two cars, in the first case, in the first case, if you see these two cars ramped and the reaction happened. But in the second case, if you see the cars didn't even touch each other. So there was no reaction here. So there was no reaction here and there was a reaction here. So in the whole chapter, we'll consider molecules as car and we'll try to understand how the reaction is happening. Right? We talk about the feasibility of the reaction. In this case here, the reaction was feasible. Here it didn't happen. If we talk about the extent of the reaction, then we'll talk about the number of cars we have, right? The blue cars and the red cars. And that will depend, that will define the extent of the reaction. If we talk about the speed of the reaction, then also we'll talk about a lot of factors. Just be with me. We'll uh, try to visualize molecules as car in the whole chapter. And the way the molecules bump each other, there's nothing about the bumping of two different cars. And the final broken car is my product. We'll assume in that way we'll see the whole chapter, right? The bumping of car, this becomes a new product. So since I told that uh, we'll talk about molecules as car in the whole chapter, let's see, in a car what is there? Car runs, right? There's a speed of the car. For example, this is a car and this is my distance time graph I have made and there's a car which will move from here to here. And if you see as the time goes, car will move from point A to point B. So this is my point A and this is my point B actually. So if you see, 
the car is moving from point A to point B and it's going up and now it's stopped. But the time is getting continued to stop and then again it's going up at the higher speed and it pause for some time and then again it goes up and it stops. So this is the distance time graph. You see this is the distance covered. Let me repeat once again. The car starts, the car accelerates and then it stops. It stops for a certain time, the time goes on and then the car again starts, again goes off, stops for some time, again the car starts and then it stops. So if you, this is, if you plot the distance time graph, this is how it look, right? Now if you see in this whole journey, if you talk about the average speed of the car, that is nothing but total distance covered by car, that is AB, by total time, this is my point here B. If you plot the XY point here, this is X will be T and Y will be point B, correct? Here it will be T will be 0 and point A. So if you see the total distance covered is AB, and total time is t. So if you talk about the average speed, average speed will be total distance covered by total time. And there is nothing but a b by t. Hope it, it took two t seconds to come from there to there. That will be the average speed. Correct from point a to b. But now if you want to find the instantaneous speed, and you must have studied this in the previous chapter, the instantaneous speed at any point, instantaneous speed at any point is nothing but, you, from that point you draw a tangent. And the slope of this tangent will give you instantaneous speed, that is dx by dt. Right? That is speed instantaneous. Okay, this is a very simple concept we have learned in physics, average speed and instantaneous speed. If you have not studied and if you are not understanding from the slide, you can watch the physics video where we explain the instantaneous speed and average speed. So here we have this instantaneous speed for a, at any given point, for example, here also you can find the instantaneous speed. I just have to draw a tangent here and the slope of this will give me an instantaneous speed. At this point, if you see, the tangent will be in this direction and the speed will be zero. At this point, the instantaneous speed will be different, right? So you see here it is accelerating, it is has more speed, here it has almost zero speed. So at any given point in time, you can just draw a tangent and you will get the instantaneous speed at this point of time. Similarly, in the reaction also, we will find the average rate of the reaction and instantaneous rate of the reaction. As I told, the molecules are nothing but car. You are just comparing. The car has average speed, instantaneous speed. So the reaction will also have average rate and instantaneous rate. So if you see, this is a typical reaction we have. So if you see a typical reaction, I have a reactant on my left hand side, product on my right hand side. Over a period of time, the reactant will diminish and will get more product. So if you see this graph, the concentration of reactant goes down as the time increase and the concentration of product in the red one increase at the time increase. The green one is my reactant and the red one is my product. That's my typical concentration time graph for a given uh, reaction. So if you see for the, any kind of reaction, if you define the rate of a reaction, the rate of a reaction will be nothing but change in, change in amount of chemical species It can be species, can be anything, uh, uh, reactant or product, right? During a reaction. Reaction. The whole thing divided by time in which change was caused. For example, you mix hydrogen and oxygen get water, the reaction took only 2 seconds, but you are observing it for maybe 30 minutes, but the reaction time will be 2 minutes because of the 2, sorry 2 seconds, because of the 2 seconds only actually the reaction happened, right? For example, you have hydrogen and oxygen, it gives water and this took only 2 seconds, correct? And after that, it was just water and you were just observing it. 
So it is not the time you are observing, it is the time when the reaction is happening actually. So that is the time you will divide and this is the change in the amount of chemical species during a reaction. For example, you talk about the decrease in the concentration of hydrogen or decrease in the concentration of oxygen or, or increase in the concentration of water. So as we have told, a chemical rate of reaction will have average rate of reaction and we have again instantaneous rate of reaction similar to car, average speed, instantaneous speed. So let's talk about the average rate of reaction, right? So average rate of reaction is nothing but the rate of decrease in concentration of any of the reactant because the concentration of reactant will decrease or the rate of increase of concentration of product, correct? Either rate of decrease in concentration of any one reactant, let's suppose you have A plus B is equal to C plus D or let's suppose you have A plus B here and you have C plus D here. So when you talk about the average rate, there is nothing but the rate of decrease in concentration of any one of the reactant, for example A or B, correct? So if you say, if I want to write average rate is nothing but minus delta N because the number of moles I am talking about of reactant by delta T or you can say delta N of product by delta T. Please note there is a negative sign here and there is no sign here, there is a positive sign here. Why there is a negative sign? Because if you see the reactant will decrease, for example at T is equal to 0, it was let's suppose 10 mole and it was uh, 2 mole, at T is equal to T this will become let's suppose 5 mole and let's suppose this is will increase it becomes 6 mole. So if you see the change in the reactant is what 5 minus 10 there is minus 5. So since there is a minus here to remove that minus we are putting a negative sign. But if you talk about the change in product final minus initial 6 minus 2 that is 4 already a positive quantity. Let me repeat once again the change in reactant final minus initial that is 5 minus 10 that is minus 5. So to get rid of minus sign we will put a minus sign here. Change in products final minus initial that is 6 minus 2 that is 4 as a positive number so we don't put a negative sign here correct so both are nothing but average rate. you can just either take the rate of decrease of the reactant or rate of increase of the product both are nothing but the rate of reaction Let's talk about the instantaneous state of the reaction. See again instantaneous state of the reaction as I told, it is nothing but at any given point of time. For example, if I want to know here, here I can find minus dr by dt. So dr by dt will be this much, you put a minus, you get this much, this slope. This is my instantaneous state of reaction or if you point for the product, it will be plus dp by dt. Y plus and minus the same rule which we have just explained. Since this is if you, this, this is my dr by dt this line, but the moment you put minus, the sign changes. Right? It becomes something in this direction. If you see, both are in the same direction at any given point of time. So, rate instantaneous is nothing but either minus dr by dt or plus dp by dt. Both are my instantaneous rate of the reaction. Right. One thing to note here is when you talk about the average rate of reaction, it doesn't mean that you have to talk uh, about the average rate from here to here. I can also talk about the average rate from here to here. This point is for example, this point is A, this point of B. I can also talk about the average rate between A and B. So in that case, I'll find the concentration at B and find the concentration of A. For example, in this case, average rate from A to B we what concentration that this be R at B minus concentration at A by 
delta t how much time it took from here to here that is it took this much time correct and since uh, we see rb will be less than ra there has to be a negative sign because it's nothing but for the reactants for the reaction it was minus of delta reacting by delta t so this is my average rate between these two points a and b correct so when you talk about the average you have to talk about the average rate of reaction between two points when you talk about instantaneous you will talk about instantaneous rate of reaction at a given point of time right two point average one point instantaneous thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again